Okay, so Sheng Long will tell us about screening of budgeted agents. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I should take off my mask before saying that. Um, my name is Sheng Long, and I will be presenting a joint work with the above authors on screening of budgeted agents. So let's think about a screening scenario. You are an admissions officer at some school. Admitting high school students will give you positive utility, so you want to admit high school students. And the way that you do it as the informed party is that you fix a test and then you design a score-based admissions policy. Now, after seeing your score-based admissions policy, the students will then decide the amount of effort they want to put into preparing and studying for this exam. And afterwards, the students will obtain a score, which in our model, we model it as the student's skill times the, uh, the amount of time the student has spent on preparing for the exam, which in other words is just their effort. And afterwards, you know, after seeing the student's score, you will then decide to admit the students based on your admissions policy. Now, one thing to note about our model is that we model students as having a constraint on the amount of effort that they can put into preparing for the exam, or in other words, um, students cannot put effort that exceeds their budgets. So you might be wondering, well, why should I care about budgets, right? And for here, we raise two reasons. The first reason is that there is a practical motivation. We all face constraints, we all face budgets. Um, and it's not, we all know that it's not the case that all the students have the same access to preparation for the exam. And so we think this is a very practical modeling assumption. And the second reason is that as the admissions officer, you care about the student's skill. But what you do observe is you observe their score, but the score does not exactly help you identify the skills given standard approaches. So in a sense, the budgets are kind of constraining. And for this talk, I'll just focus on this very simple population. A student can be a, uh, a student either has a high skill or a low skill. A student also either has a high budget or a low budget. So this effectively gives us four types of students. And as the admissions officer for a random student, you do not know their skill, you do not know their budget. And before you set your admissions policy, you also do not know what the score is going to be for each student. However, what the admissions officer does know is that for each type of student, the admissions officer knows the maximum potential achievable score for each type of student. Now, as a reminder, uh, admitting high school students gives you positive utility, so you'll want to admit high school students. And you might be wondering, hmm, well, what would be a good admissions policy just for this simple toy example, right? And, you know, let's, for starters, let's just think about a deterministic admissions policy. Let's say we just admit students who score above a certain social tau. And let's just say for this first case, we want to admit the best of the best kind of students. So let's just say that we set our threshold to 90. In this case, only the student with the high skill and the high budget, that's the only student who will be able to exert effort to reach the threshold of 90. All the other students that will find the effort too costly, they won't be able to reach the threshold, they would choose to put in zero effort and score zero. But notice here that you know, we're kind of facing an unhappy situation because our goal really is to admit students with high skills, but we cannot admit the student with the high skill. So, well, let's just think about, you know, maybe we should change our policy. Let's just say that we admit students who now score above 80. Are we happy now? Well, we do admit the students with the high skill, but notice here that we're also admitting the student um, who, you know, who has the low skill but the high budget. So, in, in a sense, you know, this is kind of what we are observing about deterministic policies, is that if you have the in-between students, so to speak, and if they have similar maximal potential scores, given the deterministic policy, there is no way that you can differentiate between those two types of students. And so really, when you're using a, a deterministic policy, you're making this trade-off. Do I want to admit students with high skill and low budget, given that I'm also admitting students with low skill and high budget? Now, in our work, we propose a solution, and in this case, it translates to a multi-track admissions policy. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is exactly what I mean by that. It's an allocation curve, but we can also see it on the scale. What it means is that if a student scores between 90 and 100, we admit them with certainty. But if they score between 72 and 90, then we admit them with probability 0.8. And in this simple toy example, this just translates to this. The student with the max potential score, she can reach 90. She can choose to put in the effort that allows her to reach 90 and be happy about it. The student who, you know, who has a maximum score of 60, you know, they cannot choose to uh, you know, reach the 72 threshold, and so they would choose to put in zero effort and score zero and be happy about it. What's really interesting is what's happening for the in-between students, so to speak. For the student with the maximum potential score of 80, which you know, is a student who has the high skill and the low budget, they can try to reach the threshold of 72, and they'd be happy with being admitted with probability of 0.8. However, for the student who has the high budget and the low skill, 
they can also try to reach that threshold, but reaching that threshold will require them to exert so much effort that it's just not worth it for them to, re to really put that all, much, all that much effort into it. And the intuition behind this is that this high skill student and the low skill student, they find the additional cost of putting more effort differently. So yes, they, <laughs> they put in zero effort and they score zero and they'll be here. All right, so in our paper, um, we show that we can efficiently identify all optimal allocation rule and optimal allocation rule for the case of two skill and budget. And in particular, this result also extends the toy case of two skill, two budgets. As for our next steps, we're thinking about extending our, um, our model to also include the case when the students have N skills and N budgets. We also want to introduce uniform subsidies and study the effects of them on you know, students' budgets. And further, we want to see you know, what are the effects if we allow the students to take the test multiple times. And you know, as a motivation for why we are considering these next steps, we think that this ties nicely to you know, increasing fairness for our allocation rule. Thank you for listening.